Hi guys, today we are going to build a spyglass reactor from a DIY kit. First thing we're going to do is glue up the cone seat. Start by adding a piece of tape to each end of the cone. This prevents drips from coming off at either end. Now, we are going to lay a bead of glue along this seam. You really want to let this dry completely overnight, so take your time with this one. The next day we can remove the tape and we are going to lightly sand the top and bottom edge of the cone to prep the edges for glue. Lightly sand each side paying careful attention to the edge where the seam is. There is often a little point where the edges come together and we want this to be perfectly flat. Once the cone is prepped, we can glue it on the cone adapter. We will use the amber solvent for this step and apply a decent amount with the applicator brush. Now we can set this aside to dry for about one hour. Next, we will use the same amber solvent to attach the saddle to the outer chamber. I put the sandpaper below the hole in case any glue drips in this step. Again, with the applicator brush, we apply a nice, thick layer and we'll set it lightly on the tube. With just a little bit of pressure, you can rotate the saddle until the radius part matches the radius of the tube. The hole in the acrylic tube is slightly larger than the hole in the saddle, so you want to line it up so that you cannot see the acrylic edge through the saddle hole. Once the saddle is in place, you can hold it for a few seconds until the glue starts to get tacky. Then you want to watch it for about a minute to make sure that it doesn't move.
About an hour later, we can now glue the base to the outer chamber. We're going to use the clear solvent in the blue tube for this. Run a bead in the base and then place the chamber on. Make sure the saddle orients towards the base and not the top. Now, while we let that dry, we can start the inner chamber assembly. For this, we are going to first glue the chamber halfway down the spyglass flange. And to do this, we are going to use the 3 16th inch spacer jig. Make sure the flange and jig are both perfectly flat on the table. And then place your chamber on the jig and push down to make sure it's flat as well. Then, we're going to run a thick bead of solvent around the edge. You want to make sure to give this joint 6-8 to eight hours of curing time before moving on to the next step. Once this is dry, we can use something long to pop out the glue jig. Then we can test fit the cone inside the flange. You may need to lightly bevel the outer edge of the cone to get a nice fit. Stand slowly and test your fit often here. Now we can run a bead of glue around this side of the flange. Let's put together the manifold assembly. Insert the unthreaded pipe section into the T and the red plug opposite. Press firmly to seat them. For the best fit of these parts, we like to lightly bevel the top of the pipe section. Just so the reactor slides smoothly on and off. We will also do the same thing with a threaded pump adapter, if you plan to use one of the CJ pumps. Now we can assemble the top screen. Insert the thumb screw through one plate, and then whichever screen you plan to use. The second plate over that, 
and then thread on the nut. Slip on the o-ring and then lightly grease it. Now we can add our stickers. And our assembly is complete. We will cover reactor setup showing several different variations in the next video.